I failed my smog test. And if you look at the data, you can see that at idle, there isn't good fuel control. I got way too much CO2. In fact, it's a gross polluter. I got 311 and the max is 120. 1 1.2, I have 3.11 measured percent. So I'm going to have to look into it and see. The first thing I'm going to do is run a an OBD1 test and just see if any sensors or other problems come up. I've got my OBD1 reader plugged in. You'll notice the plug for it on this vehicle is kind of by the brake vacuum drum right there. It's behind the cruise control servo that's right here. It's, it's just in this corner of the hood of the engine compartment. And there's a large D-shaped connector that plugs into it. This is the cover that came off of it, so you can see what it looks like. It's a D-shaped connector, plugs into the reader, and there's also a single line plugged into it. You can see that. So it's got the two connectors going to it. Next, I'm gonna turn on the ignition, run the key on engine off test, which is the first part, and see what happens. I warmed up the engine, I have the ignition on, now I'm going to turn on the reader. I'm going to push test. You can hear it actuating and running through its test. It's flashing, so it's checking for the codes. So it gave me 11, which is no codes found. And then it should give me 10, meaning that's a code saying it's going to the next mode which is looking for continuous codes okay it gives me 10 now it's searching for continuous codes which is a different set of codes it gave me 31 you can see it flashing it's still reading and 32 see the little C in the corner. So it's giving me 31 and 32. And 34 for good measure. In the book 31 for trucks only is evaporative control system. 32 for trucks is EGR pressure feedback fault. And 34 for trucks only is evap control and EGR pressure transducer sensor. So looks like it's I need to check out the EGR valve. So if you look in the truck, here's the throttle body. That's the EGR right back there. You can see that cable going to it. And first thing I'm going to do is, if you look carefully, there's a vacuum port right there on the back. See that green vacuum line goes to it. I'm going to pull that off, disconnect it, connect a vacuum source to it, and see if the valve is working. I pulled this vacuum line off and plugged it. And then if you look carefully, I plugged my vacuum line onto that vacuum connector right there. Now I'm going to start the engine and when I pull a vacuum on that it should cause the engine to stumble and then when I release the vacuum it, it should go back to running smoothly again. So that'll tell me if the EGR valve is working. Okay it's running fine. I'm going to pull a vacuum now. You hear it stumble. Now I'll release the vacuum. Here, pick back up again. It appears the EGR valve is working, but this part right here is the sensor, and that sensor may not be working. So next, I'm going to get an ohmmeter. I'm going to check that sensor and make sure that it's uh, ohms out properly. Okay, first I'm going to check. I've unplugged 
I've unplugged the connector from the sensor and I'm checking to see got the ignition on and I'm getting five volts what I'm supposed to get from the harness so that checks out okay these are the specs for the EVP sensor that I'm going to be measuring if you look I have to measure the EVP sensor resistance which is between the EVP reference and the EVP pin and that should be less than 5,000 ohms the second measurement is measuring between the EVP and the signal return which is essentially the ground and that should be just over a hundred ohms I'm going to check those two and see if they're within spec the first measurement I'm going to make is from the voltage reference pin to the EVP pin if you look at the display it reads 4.36 K ohms so that's less than 5,000 ohms so that checks out okay now I'm going to change the range on the ohm meter to the 200 range and I'm going to check from ground to the EVP pin if you look at the display now you'll see it's reading around 54 ohm 53 ohms that's less than a hundred so this is bad it's supposed to be over a hundred ohms this is the new sensor I checked it with the ohm meter and it meets both of the specs so I'm gonna install it this is what the EGR valve looks like with the sensor removed and I'm gonna go ahead and install the new one right there okay the new sensor is installed in there and I've got the harness connected to it after installing this new part on top of the EGR valve it got rid of the code 31 and 32 but then I got a code 34 so that can be caused by a number of things I back I checked all the vacuum lines and I checked the solenoid that controls that valve and I ohm, ohmed out this it checks out okay all the vacuum lines check out okay so that only left cleaning the EGR valve so this is hard to get off it's got a big nut that threads on right here uh, but I put a little bit of PV blaster on it let it sit overnight it came right off and so I want to show you what this looks like it's pretty dirty in there so I'm going to try to clean this up and see if that helps. Sometimes you get that 34 code when there's crud in there, the valve can't close all the way. And so it's getting a voltage, a little bit of voltage when it's supposed to be closed and supposed to be zero. I'll clean that out and reinstall it, see if that helps. Off the EGR valve, you can see that's where it mounts. It's on the side of the throttle body and it's basically the intake manifold it bolts right there and if you look carefully you can see that's the tube coming up from the exhaust pipe where it pulls the exhaust well, it's got that big nut that threads on there and then it's got two bolts here that bolt on there i had to pull it out of there well i found the problem <laughs> while i was cleaning the egr valve I noticed that when I pumped it up to open it up to get the carbon out of there, it would leak down. I'll show you what I mean. I have a vacuum pump hooked up to this. If you look inside that hole, I'm gonna pump this up. You'll see the valve come up and open. When I stop pumping, you'll see it leak back down and you can hear it. See it come all the way up. And it leaked right back down again. So. My EGR valve is bad, and I'm gonna have to replace that. I got the new EGR valve. I mounted the EVP sensor on top of that, and I'm ready to check for vacuum to make sure the new one holds a vacuum. I'm gonna pump it up to maybe four inches of mercury. And you can see in this case, it's holding vacuum just like it should. So that's good, and the other one didn't, so you knew it was bad. This thing was so hard to get off that 
I put some anti-seize lubricant on right here. You'll notice where that exhaust tube comes up and attaches so that it can be disassembled if it needs to. I also put them on this these bolts that go into the intake manifold because they were also a little corroded and difficult to get out. You'll notice these bolts, they have actually a an extra thread on here and it's because you thread these in and it holds the EGR in place and then there's a bracket that fits over these two studs and there's an extra nut that goes on to hold the bracket on. So when you disassemble this, you take off the first bolt all that does is get the bracket, then you gotta get this one in order to remove the EGR. Because these have this stud that sticks out the end, I used a long socket to be able to reach over that stud to get them to tighten up. It's a half inch bolt, and this extends over there. A normal socket isn't quite long enough. I installed the EGR valve with the EVP on top of it back in there, and you can see that bracket is mounted on the studs that come out of those screws. And then this is what it holds. It holds these little clips that guide these wires. The next thing I'm gonna do, if you look, you're gonna see a couple of studs in here. I, this is where you can see one of them back here. It's hard to see the other one. It's up here. It's right here. There's one here, there's one here. That is where this mounts. So this is going to go on there like this with each of these holes going over one of those studs. This is the EVR. If you remember, I checked this for continuity. It's just a solenoid. And this checked out good. So I have to put a connector back on. I have to put the vacuum tubes to it. This one is actually a solenoid that controls the air, the lines from the air pump that go to the catalytic converter. And this one, if you get a code 44, this may be your problem here, this solenoid. So it's not really related to the problem I have, but it's mounted to the same bracket. So I had to disconnect the lines to it. So now I'm gonna hook up the electrical and the vacuum lines to that. Then I can connect the electrical line to the EVP sensor. And I should have everything back together. I've got the bracket with the EVR mounted back in there. I've got the vacuum and electrical hooked up to it. I plugged in the electrical to the EVR sensor. Oh, that's the EVP sensor. And I think everything's back together. I'm going to clear the codes, warm it up, and give it a test. I warmed up the engine. I've got the ignition on. I'm going to turn on the reader. And I'm going to push test. You should hear all the little clicking. I don't know if you heard that, but that was a lot of clicking. Okay, the little black square that flashes means it's reading the first set of codes. If they're all clear, we'll come back with an 11. Okay, they're clear for that. Then it's going to give me a 10, and it's going to read the continuous codes. And i got to see if those are... If I'm getting an error code in that set. Okay, the 10 means that it's finished reading the first set. It's moved on to the continuous codes. And there's an 11 there. That means all of those are clear as well. So both the 31, 32, and 34 are all clear. This is my new smog test result after the repairs. And if you'll notice, what's measured here for the CO percent, it's zero. So that's really clean. And then if you notice here, both of these numbers are, well, the first one at idle is below average. The other one's right near average. And this is for a big 7.5 liter motor. So it's running very clean and the repairs took care of the problem.